Now for this question, what I've done is I've sketched out the diagram that we're given in the exam paper. We're going to need to mark some forces on this, so uh, that's quite necessary. What I've also done is just got a summary here of what we're given, just in case you can't see this question on my website. What we've got here then is a plank, AB, of mass M. And its length is 2A. And it rests with one end here at A against a rough vertical wall. And the plank is held in a horizontal position by a rope. One end of the rope is attached to the plank at B and the other end is attached to a wall, a rough wall at C, which is vertically above A. And what we have is a small block of mass 3M at this point here, P, where AP is equal to X. Now the plank is in equilibrium in a vertical plane which is perpendicular to the wall. And the angle between the rope and the plank is alpha, where tan of alpha equals 3 quarters. Now the plank is modelled as a uniform rod, and the block is modelled as a particle, and the rope is modelled as a light, inextensible string. And what we've got to do using this model is to show that the tension in that rope is given by this equation here. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, need to mark on the forces acting on this plank, which we're modeling as a uniform rod. And so being a uniform rod, its weight is going to act in the middle here. So we'll just mark that in as acting here. It acts downwards. The weight will be the mass times acceleration due to gravity, mg. Normally I'd mark on the units as being newtons. That's assuming that lengths were measured in meters. We're not told that, so I'm just going to leave it as mg. Now then, we've also got the weight of the small block, which we're assuming is a particle. That's going to act downwards. Its mass is 3m, so therefore its weight will be 3mg. We've also got a tension. The tension in the rope, that's going to be acting in this direction from B to C. I'll mark that in, not in red, we'll just mark it in as T. All right, T for that tension. I'll mark it in black there. And the reason for that is we're going to be splitting this into two components. One perpendicular to the rod and one along the rod, okay? So remember the component of T acting along the rod because it contains the angle alpha, if you've watched my tutorials on resolving forces, is a cosine, T cosine of alpha because it contains that angle. So that force there, that component of T, is T cos alpha. Whereas the perpendicular one, the one that doesn't contain the angle alpha, that force is T sine alpha. OK, so mark those two in. We've also got another force acting on this rod AB, and that is a resultant force coming from the rod pushing in against A. Remember, the rod also wants to slide down the wall, but there's a normal reaction as well. Those two forces combine to give me some resultant force out, say, in this direction, okay? I'll just mark it in like that. We'll call that R. Now, because I want to find out what this tension is in the rope, what I need to do is take moments. I'm going to take moments about the point A. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't know anything about R and by taking moments about A, I will find that this force R doesn't enter the equation. I can just form an equation with T in, in terms of M, G, A and X. And that should be enough to 
get this. The other thing I need to do as well is just work out what sine alpha is and cosine alpha is in case we need them. And what I can do is take this result, draw a right angle triangle. It doesn't have to be accurate, okay? So we'll just do that. Remember that when you're using alpha, the tan of alpha is three quarters. That's the opposite side over the adjacent side in this right angle triangle. If you work out the hypotenuse here by Pythagoras' theorem, you should find you get five, the result of the square root of three squared plus four squared. But it's a familiar three, four, five triangle, so you should know that. Okay, so let's take moments about the point A. And if we take moments about A, I'm going to take anti-clockwise as the positive sense. It's up to you which way you take it, but anti-clockwise to me seems the best way. It keeps T positive, as you'll see. Okay, so remember that when we're taking moments, it's the force times the perpendicular distance to your pivot point. Okay, so we'll start with this force here. One of the reasons for splitting into two components. We've got T sine alpha, that force there, multiplied by its perpendicular distance to A, which is this distance along here, to A. All right. Now, if we take this component of the tension, T cos alpha, it has no effect in turning the rod because this force passes through the point A, our point that we're taking moments about. It won't want to turn it, okay? So we can neglect that one. If we take this force now, the weight of the rod, mg, that's going to want to turn the rod in a clockwise sense about A. So clockwise sense is negative, so we've got minus, and its moment will be the force, its weight, mg, times the perpendicular distance back to A. Well, being a uniform rod, this is acting in the middle, so it's just going to be times half of 2a, in other words, a. Now we've got the weight of the block, the small block, which we're treating as a particle. Its weight is 3mg, and its moment then is going to be 3mg times the distance back to a, which is x. And it's wanting to turn it in a clockwise sense, the negative sense. So it's going to be 3mg the force, times the distance back to A, which is X. That's the moment of that small block. We don't need to take, as I say, R into account because that force passes through A. So there's no turning effect there. So this is the resultant moment about A, but because the plank, or we're treating it as a uniform rod, is in equilibrium, that total moment must be equal to zero. So it's just a question now of substituting in values, rearranging this for t. So we've got t times sine of alpha. Well, we can see that the sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, so that ratio is going to be 3 fifths. So you've got t times 3 fifths, and that's multiplied by the 2a. And if I were to add these two terms to both sides and pull out mg as a common factor, I can see that I'm going to get this equaling mg bracket and then we'll have a plus 3x. So this is looking quite good. It's starting to shape up towards this. And you can easily see that if I now multiply both sides by the 5 here, and on the top here, we've got 6a. Divide both sides by 6a. You'll end up with t equaling the 5 times the mg. 5mg times all of a plus 3x. And we've got 6a here, 3 times the 2a. But we divide both sides by that. And you're going to end up with that all over 6a. And there you go. All right, so I hope you're able to see your way through that one.